Well, February 2024 is done with, and we are currently in March 2024 right now. And I must say that February really delivered a ton of found lost media just like January 2024. Speaking of January 2024, I just have to give you guys a huge thank you because of how well my previous video on lost media found in January of 2024 performed. And it is by far my most well received video on my channel so thank you guys very much. Anyways I don't have a lot to say for this video's intro so without further ado let's begin the video. In the Flow with Affion Crockett was a sketch comedy show that was created by Affion Crockett and Jamie Foxx, airing from August 14th to September 11th, 2011 on Fox, before it was cancelled due to low ratings after airing for only six episodes. The show starred actor and comedian Affion Crockett who got his own sketch comedy show on Fox, and as he brings it to prime time, he uses his impressions, rapping, and comedic skills to make his show an in-the-flow sketch comedy and battle rap improv game show television series. The entire series was available to view on Fox's website around the time when it was airing back in 2011, before all six episodes went missing not long after the series was cancelled. And for the longest time, only the first episode was available to be watched in its entirety, with it being available to watch on Dailymotion, along with some clips and sketches from episodes 2, 3, and 6 being available to be watched on YouTube, leaving episodes 4 and 5 completely lost. Recently on February 1st, 2024, the full series was uploaded to Mega by Lost Media Wiki user Jackstone, from LMW Forums user Keat722 resulting in the entire series being found after 12 years. The Ghost and Molly McGee is an animated series created by Bill Motts and Bob Roth that aired on the Disney Channel from October 1st, 2021 to January 13th, 2024, running for a total of 41 episodes spanning two seasons. The show is about a 13-year-old girl named Molly McGee who arrives at her new home in Brighton, only to discover that her home is already occupied by a grumpy ghost named Scratch. Upon meeting Molly for the first time, Scratch curses her in an attempt to scare her away. However, this backfires causing him to be forever bonded to her. At first, Scratch is antagonistic towards Molly. However, he eventually becomes friends with her and the two go on wacky misadventures together and help each other out as their friendship strengthens. On February 5th, 2024, the show's unaired pilot episode was uploaded to YouTube by YouTube user Otter Elite Madani Wawasin5719. And my gosh, that is a long username. And if you were to watch the pilot episode, you would notice that it is almost similar to the beginning of the show's first episode titled The Curse. Although there are some changes that could be noticed when watching it alongside its publicly aired version. So for any fans of the show, the pilot is now available to watch. In 2005, BBC Two would air an annual nature documentary series called Spring Watch that would eventually get a preschool version of it called Sabibi's Spring Watch in May of 2006. That debuted on the Sabibi's channel. The show would be hosted by Jackson, a character from the Sabibi's show The Storymakers, with appearances from various other Sabibi's stars including Jelly, Jackson's sidekick, British preschool TV legend Justin Fletcher, and Dogsby, Tiggs, and Mucka, the main stars of The Shiny Show. 
Not much info is known about the series, although it seems that the Sabibi show The Green Balloon Club was inspired by it, and it is known that Sabibi Springwatch won a BAFTA award in 2006. Despite the show winning an award, any footage of it is very hard to find, and for many years the only footage from it to surface online was the season 2 closing theme Springs Out, which was uploaded to YouTube by TTWFN on June 14th, 2007 with a rip of the song from the website being uploaded the following year by King of Hustlers 1. However, that would all change on August 7th, 2014, when the Season 1 credits song Jump Up was uploaded to YouTube by Little Mad Mixer Girl X. And over the next several years, more content from the show would resurface online. According to many people who are searching for lost episodes from the show, Season 2 seems to be easier to find than Season 1, not helped by the fact that there is no known proof of Season 1 being reran, while Season 2 was known to have reran in 2008, likely to lead up to the premiere of the show's successor, The Green Balloon Club. As of making this video, the most recent discovery of the show was the 8th episode of the show's second season. That was found and uploaded to YouTube on February 10th, 2024 by RVF2007 leaving us with one less episode from the show that is lost. I'm pretty sure you guys are all familiar with what the quiz show Jeopardy is, and that it has a good number of lost episodes, so I don't think I need to explain the show's rules, or any of its lost episodes that I won't be focusing on in this video. In this video, I'll be talking about 5 episodes that have not aired since they were broadcasted back in 1986, and those episodes featured a female contestant named Barbara Lowe who won all five episodes on the show during the show's second season from March 6, 1986 to March 12, 1986. And in case you don't know, before 2003, Jeopardy! winners could only appear for a maximum of five episodes before leaving with their money they won, whereas nowadays winners can keep winning consecutively for as long as possible. After winning all five of her episodes, Barbara would be disqualified from the Jeopardy! Tournament of Champions for the year 1986, and this happened early in the show's third season, when it was revealed that she had appeared on other game shows in the past, which were Wheel of Fortune in 1976, It's Anybody's Guess in 1977, and Bullseye in 1981. And prior to her appearance on Jeopardy, she went by different aliases and lied about her name. In fact, her real name is currently unknown. It is also unknown how much money Barbara won in total for her five wins. However, Harry Eisenberg, who was the show's producer and head writer for the first seven years of Jeopardy's revival, mentioned in his 1993 book Inside Jeopardy, a revealing look inside TV's top quiz show, that Barbara won approximately $50,000. Although, according to the J Archive, she won a total of $35,192, so take Eisenberg's claim with a grain of salt. After it was revealed that Barbara had appeared on other game shows under different names in the past, her winnings were withheld, which would cause her to threaten to sue Merv Griffin Enterprises and King World Productions, before she ended up receiving her winnings, although she was banned from any future tournaments on the show. It was reported that Barbara bounced and fidgeted behind her podium, argued with the show's host Alex Trebek over incorrect answers, and was very rude to the other contestants. In May of 2023, Barbara Lowe would set the record straight about her Jeopardy! appearance and stated that during her second tape day, she developed a nasty case of gastroenteritis and that midway through taping her second game, she felt a terrible rumble in her stomach and that Alex Trebek said to her that she was costing the show time and money for it. She would also reveal that her stomach ailment had cost the program thousands of dollars and that the show was trying to regain their lost money by withholding her winnings. For the longest time, the only surviving footage of Barbara Lowe on Jeopardy was a 67 second clip of the final Jeopardy round of her second game that was uploaded to YouTube by YouTube user TPIJ290 on May 1st, 2020. Although the video is now unlisted, 
but fortunately the clip was re-uploaded so you can still view it online. Recently on February 15th, 2024, the Museum of Classic Chicago Television YouTube channel uploaded the fifth episode of Barbara Lowe's run on Jeopardy! That aired on March 12th, 1986. And as of making this video, it is the only episode from her run that has resurfaced online, leaving four more episodes to be found. The Boondocks was an American animated sitcom that aired on Adult Swim from 2005 to 2014, and involved a black American family known as the Freemans, settling into the fictional, friendly, and predominantly white suburb of Woodcrest. With the show mainly focusing on two brothers named Huey and Riley Freeman and their grandfather, each episode had a unique and obscure plot that would sometimes feature celebrities, and the show was based off the Boondocks comic strip on Hitlist.com. In 2003, Fox would request a six-minute pilot for the show, and the creator of the series Aaron Magruder and film producer slash director Reginald Hudlin would work on the pilot that Fox had requested. However, the two would face many difficulties during the pilot's production, before it was announced that the pilot was rejected by Fox in the summer of 2004. Around that time, Cartoon Network had expressed interest in the Boondocks pilot, and wanted to have it air on the Adult Swim block. Despite Mike Lazo, the Vice President of Programming for Cartoon Network and Adult Swim, mentioning that the pilot felt watered down after viewing it. Cartoon Network ended up formally picking the boondocks up for a 15 half hour episode order, where it would go on to air for four seasons on Adult Swim and receive critical acclaim. On May 7, 2016, the series producer Carl Jones released a 21 second clip from the pilot on his Twitter and the clip would reveal that the pilot had a much different animation style that was closer to that of a comic strip rather than the anime-influenced art style of the series. In the short clip, a brief interaction is shown between characters Huey Freeman and Jasmine Dubois as they talk about a fight that Huey was involved in, and some sources claim that the pilot has been shown at conventions before, though this has yet to be confirmed. On February 17th, 2024, a user named Cal Eastwood uploaded the full 6-minute pilot to the Internet Archive. However, we still have yet to know how the user had found the pilot. So while the pilot is found, we now have a question that needs to be answered. Hershey's Really Big 3D Show is a 3D short film that was presented at the Hershey's Chocolate World Visitor Center between 2002 and 2013, and the film was created by Threshold Digital Research Labs, a branch of Threshold Entertainment, who would later go on to create the movie Food Fight, which is now considered to be one of the worst movies of all time. Yikes. The film was 12 minutes in length and was presented by a real-life host playing the character Professor D.P. Quigley, beginning with a stereotypically boring presentation on the history of chocolate, before he is interrupted by a 3D animated cartoon character named Johnny Proctor, who takes the show in a new direction with show tunes, gags, and kitsch 3D effects. After tasting a Hershey's Kiss, he discovers that chocolate doesn't need show tunes to be advertised because it is already amazing. It is unknown who voiced Johnny Proctor along with the rest of the cast, and due to the film only being presented at the Hershey's Chocolate World in person, it was never given any sort of home release. In 2015, a video of a camera recording of the film would surface on YouTube, and it was uploaded by A66056. However, due to the film and the video being 3D and recorded by a camera, it is of very low quality, cropped, and hardly representative of the film's content. 
In 2024, a full HD copy of the film was provided by a crew member to Lost Media Wiki user Ziggy Kashmir. Before Ziggy would upload both the monoscopic and stereoscopic versions to the Internet Archive on February 21st, as well as upload the monoscopic version to his YouTube channel on the same day, making the film no longer a piece of lost media. In 2007, back when Tyler the Creator was known as Ace the Creator, he would release many albums onto his MySpace page, which are all lost except for one album called At Your Own Risk that is fully found. However, another album that he released called Stereotype is partially found as of now, which was in production as early as 2006, focusing on themes that would be seen in his later albums such as Wolf, At Your Own Risk, Flower Boy, and most evidently, Igor. The album would remain available to listen to until around 2019 when MySpace's server migration deleted all music prior to being uploaded in 2016. And unfortunately, the MySpace archival project has not archived any of Tyler's music, making any songs from any of Tyler's MySpace albums being very difficult to find. The good news is that on February 22nd, 2024, one of the songs from Tyler the Creator's album Stereotype titled Rocky's Revenge was found and uploaded to YouTube by Ash. So at least some music from Tyler's MySpace era is still being found to this day. Although, it is uncertain if all of his MySpace era songs will ever be found eventually. In 2002, Nintendo would release a game for the Game Boy Color called Shantae, and it would go on to receive very positive critical reception despite its poor sales, likely stemming from the game being released so late in the Game Boy Color's lifespan, with the Game Boy Advance already having been available for over a year. However, despite the game selling poorly, it would go on to spawn an entire series consisting of six games in total as of making this video, if you count the first game and the original game had also been re-released on the Nintendo 3DS Virtual Console service. Due to various issues mostly having to do with finding a publisher, there were several other Shantae games being developed during the series' 8-year hiatus that were never completed, with one of the games being Shantae TV, which is a plug-and-play TV game port of Shantae 2 Risky Revolution slash Shantae Advance, a Game Boy Advance sequel which was also unfinished. Shantae TV was shown at the 2003 Toy Fair running on Sun Plus technology, and due to television screens being taller than Game Boy Advance screens, the game has more vertical screen space. Shantae Advance is known to still exist, as a playthrough of its playable demo was streamed on Twitch TV on October 3rd, 2014, but Shantae TV has not been seen since the 2003 Toy Fair. Recently, on February 24th, 2024, a build of Shantae TV was found and uploaded to the Internet Archive by DevEd2. However, the game currently cannot be emulated as of now, so that gives us something to look forward to in the future. Little Big Planet Hub was going to be a PlayStation 3 game based on the Little Big Planet series, developed by Sumo Digital, and the game was announced at Gamescom back in 2013 where a trailer for it was shown. Little Big Planet Hub was likely going to be a free downloadable game, where players can have unlimited access to features seen in the first two Little Big Planet games, 
and exclusive content. After the 2013 Gamescom announcement, Little Big Planet Hub was never mentioned again, causing many people to believe the game was cancelled, even though no announcement regarding the game's cancellation was ever made. However, one can theorize that the game likely became Sumo Digital's then upcoming game Little Big Planet Free, which was being worked on around the time any information regarding Little Big Planet Hub was no longer surfacing. On February 25, 2024, an internal beta of Little Big Planet Hub was found and dumped by Little Big Russia and uploaded to archive.org by Cancerius, rendering the game as fully found. On March 20th, 2005, a user known as Marek uploaded a 31-second snippet of an unknown song onto spiritofradio.ca and did not disclose any information on where or when the snippet had been recorded. The unknown song would be referred to by many as Try to Smile Again, and in 2023 the song would gain the internet's attention again after being uploaded onto YouTube. While it is unknown what the song's exact lyrics are, internet users have shared the lyrics they were able to make out, with the most common lyrics that were heard being, A million people have stayed together, I can make you smile if you are sometimes crying, forget your problems, try to smile again, if you really want to, I can really make it, good enough, good enough, therefore we tried, please don't stand me up, take my hand, come together, we're enough too. Again, these were the lyrics that were most commonly heard. However, there's a chance you have heard different lyrics than the majority of people. After all, not everyone's hearing is exactly the same. Due to some of the lyrics being mispronounced, it has been theorized that the song originates from a non-English speaking country, with many people saying that the song is sung in an Eastern European sounding accent and many have compared the singer to the vocalist of the Russian band Nishta, who mostly record in Russian. On December 19th, 2023, a Spirit of Radio user claiming to be Marek commented on the song saying, Hello people of the forums. Have not been on here for a long time, but seen many videos online about this song and found this link. The song was familiar in my head and when I clicked on it, I found this post and it all came back to me. After all these months, here are your answers. A long time ago in late 2004, me and my friend turned 17 and had our own cars and tape players. We found a blank tape at the side of the road and we decided to give it a try. This tape has since been lost. We heard this song but didn't know where from, but we knew it was in our brains somewhere. I recorded this with my phone, hence the bad quality. But we spent months trying to find this song and I came across this place and uploaded it. I forgot all about this as I was just a 17 year old kid. But I do in fact remember this song. It is from Italy and was played at many discos and parties. The song is called Hold My Hand Tight by Rico. I can't remember his last name. This might not even be right as I can't F. However, I must mention that on the Spirit of Radio website, you can make your username anything regardless on if it has been used before or not. So there's a good chance that Marek didn't make that comment, but rather someone pretending to be him to trick online users. Recently on February 14th, 2024, an extended snippet of the song was uploaded onto YouTube by Jaw80, with a description reading, I recorded it from Estonian radio, can't remember exact station, early or mid 1990s. Early 2000s, I send 30 seconds of it under name Oscar to Marek's website, 
where people could identify songs. This song was never identified. So two days ago, I discovered that 30 seconds of the song is on YouTube and noticed that many people are interested. So I uploaded the full song, at least almost. The extended snippet contained almost all of the full song being 3 minutes and 6 seconds in length. However, almost all of the first verse of the song was not in the snippet, meaning that the song was still partially lost. Not to mention that the artist and title for the song still remained unknown. On February 26, 2024, the song was identified as Bravely by Beat Boy. And one day later on February 27th, the full song was uploaded to YouTube, making it available to listen to in its entirety.